Hi everybody. Hi there. Well, this travel video is about uh, Mesa Verde and of course, how could you not have a good time there? Of course, when we do things, it's with a little bit of a twist. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't that Google was wrong. It's, it's that the uh, two different roads were within literally 50 feet of each other. And <laughs> we took one and wound up on the top of this mountain. One lane road, dirt. <laughs> yeah. And, and, uh, and, and surprised the uh, road worker up on top of the hill. He was like, what Why are, are you they doing up there? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? But we found our way back down and, and got going again. Um, I can't say enough about Mesa Verde. It, it was a wonderful, wonderful place to visit. Yes. And of course, we love history too. So, you know, that uh, it, it, humbling to stand in. Um, an area that you know Indians did thousands of years ago, yes. hundreds of years ago. Yes. And it is just a phenomenal thing. So, hope you enjoy it. And if you haven't seen our other videos, please check them out. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And we'd love to hear any comments or suggestions you may have. Thanks so much for tuning in. And hope you enjoy the video. See ya. Take care. This travel day takes us from Moab, Utah to Cortez, Colorado. And as we were leaving Moab, we got an awesome view of the LaSalle Mountains. About 15 miles south of Moab, we saw a sign for a rest area and this message painted on the side of the mountain. Um, so we did decide to stop at the rest area, even though we'd just gotten on the road, to see if we can figure out more information on what this was about. We weren't able to find any more information at the rest area, so we got back on the road, only to find that just on the other side of this mountain was this little tourist trap called Hole in the Rock. <laughs> Um, we had just gotten up to speed again and did not was we were just not able to stop with the trailer so I got these two pictures out the back window that's as good as we could do but <laughs> if you're ever on highway 191 south of Moab maybe you want to check this place out And then we came across this huge arch that you can see right from the highway. This was pretty amazing. After taking the wrong turn that Ed mentioned in our intro, and then finding uh, the camping area, the free camping area that we were looking to stay at was actually part of a target shooting range. We decided to go down to the bottom of the hill and camp in Bradfield Campground. says come on people are we gonna do something so off we went to Mesa Verde National Park we got a little education about these mountains while we were here um, these mountains were formed millions of years ago with alternating layers of shale and sandstone now, when it rains or uh, when the snow melts, the water seeps through the sandstone. But when it comes up against the shale, it can't go any further because that's non-porous. So it starts to come out towards the side of the mountain and they call these seep springs where the water comes out. And that is where um, these ancient Pueblo uh, communities got their water. Uh, for cooking and drinking and everything because there are no rivers or lakes or anything in this area. The first ruin site that we came across was Farview Community 
And uh, this first house is the, called the Farview House. Um, they estimate these single story dwellings uh, were built around the eighth century. And they actually started building two story dwellings around the 12th century. And not far away is the Pipe Shrine House. Um, they actually estimate that there were as many as 35 small communities in this half of square mile area. And a short walk away is another structure that they call Coyote Village. Down the road a little ways is another ruined site um, called Cedar Tree Tower, which is a tower and a kiva, and there is a tunnel um, connecting these two together. The largest ruined site in Mesa Verde is obviously Cliff Palace. Um, Cliff Palace has about 150 rooms and they expect that it used to house a population of about 100 people. Now, um, taking into consideration that Mesa Verde National Park has approximately 600 cliff dwellings on the property, 75% of those only have one to five rooms. So the size of Cliff Palace just means that it had to be a significant building for a special purpose. And if you turn around and look on the other side of the canyon from Cliff Palace, you will see some additional cliff dwellings uh, on the other side of the canyon. When we left Mesa Verde, we went over to Canyon of the Ancients National Monument, and they have some um, ancient Pueblo houses out there too. Um, so we took a look at one that is a fairly good sized house, and part of it is underneath a canopy to protect it. But we're actually, we were actually allowed to walk inside this one, and that was very interesting. So we got to do a video because photos just aren't going to explain this well, but we're inside an ancient uh, ancestral Pueblo Indian Kiva and uh, it's still under excavation. There's only certain areas we can see and they've covered it with this uh, protective thing here. But we're actually standing in that, and these were built underground, so it was nice and cool. And this is where we came in at. And it also kept them warm in the winter, too. So it very clever. An amazing construction. They would do this. Now, apparently, no two are alike. They they have some similarities, but each one is unique unto itself. Cool stuff. So this part that we're looking at is actually a doorway with two windows. 
Um, this hasn't been excavated all the way down to the original floor, so that's why it's so tiny. Um, but as far as the other things that we've been seeing today, I think the doorways were kind of tiny anyway. So maybe they don't have too awful much further to go, maybe just another foot or so. And this Kiva, this is a, what they call a giant Kiva, which was used as a community center for the Indians to meet. And, uh, oh, sorry for the jerk there, tripped a little bit. But these two elements in here, one is a summer, represents summer people, and the other one is winter people. The entrance is over here, and around the rim you can see, uh, you know, you could imagine people sitting all around that perimeter. Uh, amazing structure building, and uh, you know, the Indians really had it going on, man. They, uh, and this was all covered with a roof, and you can see there was four post holes, one, two there, and two over there that supported the roof up above. So we really only had one day to explore in this area. So we tried to pack in as much as we could because um, we knew in the morning we were going to wake up to... Come on, bud. What's the matter? You don't know what to make of things? <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different out here, huh? Woo! What's your thing? <laughs> you happy, huh? You would be. Not this boy. Freaking cold. Yeah, he's liking the snow. You like the snow, huh, bud? 